So welcome to the show today. Thank you very much for taking out the time and joining us today. Please make sure that you are interacting at Stephen Taylor SA Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So we're going to play an amazing video, an introduction to this guest that we're going to be having on the show right now. Uh, he needs no introduction, but I'm going to let the video do its thing and talk for itself. And then we'll come back and introduce the guest to you in a moment. I'm Marius Fransman, born and bred in the Western Cape, worked for rural development historically, worked in a rural community, an educator by profession, an activist, a leader, and served the South African government, the South African people in various portfolios. In fact, as a 25, 26 year old person, I was the mayor of the West Coast in particular in South Africa. I also served as a provincial minister for the Western Cape government, i.e. in various portfolios for at least nine to ten years. And I ended my government responsibility as the deputy minister of international relations and cooperation. Also served um, the president um, as the special envoy to Madagascar. And that was a very interesting situation because Madagascar had a coup d'etat. There was all the turmoil. There was um, issues between the former president and the current president. And South Africa as the head of Troika at that point had to go and engage through SADC. And we had to bring peace, stability and, and through mediation. Also served as the leader of the African National Congress, the ruling party in South Africa in the Western Cape for many, many a year. All of that has propelled one to understand that we are a young democracy. South Africa is a young democracy. We are a growing democracy. We have various levels of poverty, underdevelopment, unemployment, but we've also got a level of elitism. We've got wealth on the one hand, and we've got extreme poverty. And that's what we're grappling with. We come from a very, very divided past. We come from extreme form of racism. We come from oppression. But we were able to overcome it because the spirit of the South African society, the spirit of our nation is embedded through our icon, Nelson Rodeslashra Mandela. And that is the person of great humanity, our icon on the 18th of July, which in fact is his birthday, that globally nations across the world through the United Nations General Assembly is honoring Madiba as the chairperson of uh, Moja Group, we were looking across the world for strategic partners to find partners that are able to help us to deal with talent, to identify skills opportunity, to identify enterprise development opportunities, to identify the type of business opportunities that can connect the world. Now, as we were able to overcome apartheid, through networking, through international solidarity, through, through local and international partners. It is on that basis that we also know that actually we had to find those individuals across the world that shares the values in the spirit of Nelson Mandela. And that brings us to the fact that we have just recently signed and launched a company called Fight to Fame South Africa. The world, if you look at the world entertainment and films, between China and America, at least 65 to 70 percent of all the opportunities for film industry and entertainment rest in those two countries. And we are saying with a one billion people in Africa, 
it is Africa's time. We are saying that South Africa with 55 million people, with nine provinces, with at least 250, 280 municipalities, that South Africa offers the world, world-class infrastructure, that we've got the most beautiful scenery. We've got Table Mountain in the south, we've got the garden routes, we've got Eastern Cape, we've got various villages across um, South Africa. We've got a modern city of Johannesburg, we've got gold, we've got diamonds, and we are calling on the film industry, we are calling on the entertainment industry, we are calling on the gaming industry, we are calling on tourism to look at South Africa in a renewed way. So to the family of Fight to Fame International, if you've been to the whole world and you've never visited South Africa, then you indeed has not yet seen the beauty of the world. And therefore we're calling on you and you and you to join us in our path to make sure that we create a better life, a better Africa and a better world through Fight to Fame. Because Fight to Fame is the answer to push back poverty, unemployment and inequality and to create wealth, not for the um, wealthy only, but also the poor, the destitute and the vulnerable. So welcome back to the show, an amazing video there of uh, this guest that I'm having on the show right now. And I don't know how many, how many, geez, I don't know if I can remember all his titles, um, leader, deputy minister, MEC, mayor, Marius Franzmann, what have you not been? You know, you've been everything, eh? I've, I've <laughs> been around, I've been around. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for um, taking the time out to chat to us. So tell us about, wh where were you born firstly? Wh tell us about that. I was born in Blackheath. Um, in fact, let me rather rephrase that. I was in Alsace River till okay. the age of two years. So, and then I grew up in Blackheath, um, between Kells River and East River. So if you ask people today of Blackheath, they will say it's a nice town. If you ask me, it was like a kind of a rural area between yes. Kells River and Is that an industrial River. area now? Yeah, predominantly. But okay. it's you get Gailey, you get Blackheath, you get those areas. Okay. And then I I grew up there and then I went to school in Bishop Blavis in the Cape Flats. Oh wow. Yeah. And the tactic struggles? Yeah. Um born um I think I was sub A, grade one, um in nineteen seventy six. Um in Bishop Lavis, and then obviously I went to another school. And, but I, I basically got my struggle experience in, in, in Bishop Lavis and in Blackheath. Those years um, between 82 and 87, it was, it was the years of real yeah, struggle. Yeah, and we yeah. were in high school, yeah. So where did your, your activism, your wanting to get into politics, where did that kind of, where did that kind of start out? I think it's a church. I, oh, think really? it's, I think it's a church. I grew up in a Catholic um, environment and um, we had St. Vincent de Paul. We had a um, lot of issues about the community and development. And then at school, and then obviously at school, I was then at eight, the uh, SRC chairperson. I was then at nine, again, the SRC. You know, I was there, I was, but what was ironic, I was also a head boy. So oh, really? if you look, if you go back to that era, that the head boys were seen as the very disciplined yes. uh, people and the respectful and they, they're actually looking at things academically. So you're saying you're not, you're naughty. And, and the, that too. <laughs> okay. and, then, and then at the level of SRC, um, it was seen as the rebellious guys. Yes. So I was able to bring it both together in wow. terms of making sure that from a youthful angle, we were able to be part of that struggle. And I think what propelled me into, in, 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 I remember distinctively, I grew up in Blackheath, was in, 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 in Austin where there was a shop. Mm. And then, must have been 83, so I was at primary school. The year I was born, uh, yeah. wow. Yeah, your, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Show the age difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I must have been in primary school, and then I heard um, in the shop somebody talking about a mandala, meaning I didn't know anything, no politics okay. um, at, at primary school. But it was that story about him being released or not. So that possibly that was the first time that I picked up anything about somebody in prison sure. fighting for rights. And I was like primary school, so I wouldn't have been at all active. The next process was really um, in Blackheath when Chris Nissen and others, for example, yes. came to Blackheath and East River. And we then were in Blackheath and East River 
part of a very strong process and um, the Black Christmas, um, fighting for the rights of our people. Mm. You had the, the tricameral system and we fought against that in, in our community and at school. And then, yeah, propelled into struggle at high school. But I want to ask you, not like a personal question, but if you take what was happening then when you were growing up and you take what is happening now, would you say much has changed? I think we should celebrate the fact. I think we should celebrate the fact that, you know, going from Blackheath to, sorry, going from Blackheath to, to Bishop Lavers yeah. via Belleville, we couldn't go and, and, and you come from a background, from yeah. a cultural background that could be classified as white. Yes. I come from one classified as colored and yeah. then you have a black African. So in that era, at school, what we literally had to experience is there was first class and first class with, with it's for the rich whites or for the poor whites and it was then the third class um, and and i remember many at times and and i think people from my generation would remember this where we for example will get off the station or get off the train or get into the train and the white young boys were throwing for example stones and oh, lemons really? into into it so it was a very it, that was all real yeah. so so i think we must celebrate the fact that we've got freedom. Mm. We must celebrate the fact that there is a, there's a democratic dispensation, that, that, that we are able, it's not yet there, but that we're able to rise to the occasion, not only because we are from a particular um, um, yes. historical cultural yes. background. I think the problems are still very real and imminent. I think we, 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 we have very serious problems. Today's problems is poverty, unemployment, and illiteracy. I tell you what, let's um, take a break with him. Yeah. We'll talk more, more about that in a moment. We're yeah. in conversation with Marius Franzmann, uh, Deputy Minister, MEC, Mayor. We'll continue the conversation in a moment. So welcome back to the show uh, with Stephen Taylor. Make sure that you are interacting on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Stephen Taylor SA. We're in conversation with uh, Marius Franzmann, um, Mayor, so Deputy Minister, MEC, an all-round good guy. Is that is that right? Was I supposed to say that? I I, I would assume that a young rebellious person oh, really? grew up and ultimately, for example, from a youthful age, just for example, were very focused. My wife would argue that I'm obviously now less focused because yeah. of now that I, for example, uh, I, I'm getting to 51 soon. So. Oh, wow. Uh, That's not that old, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I call you Urm then. <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> okay. not. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so, okay, so you were talking about the challenges that we face, but also the celebrations that we should be celebrating mm. in South Africa. And yes, I agree. There are many things that we should mm. be celebrating, mm. but we far from that rainbow nation that Nelson Mandela wanted, um, what, would you, what would you say? I think, we, I think we cheapened our 94 process. Yeah. Because I think that the issue of rainbow nation, it was not just a few good experience. It was supposed to be dealing with economic transformation. Yeah. So I personally believe that from the structure, and you asked the early question, how much has changed? The structure of the South African society Hmm. is still largely reflecting the old. That's yes, a problem. I agree. The fact that we can drive from here right through to Swaziland, we're still sitting with 85% land in the hands of the white constituency. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. If you look at, for example, the disparity between just Cape Town, Cape Flats, um, um, Kailitsha, and then the suburbs, there is a real disparity. And I think what it requires is boldness hmm. and decisiveness. But I do believe that it's not only about the individual. Many times people asking me, it's about who's the president, who's the this or the that. I don't, I don't really believe it's only that. It's about the structure of the South African state. Yeah. Because we've got national government, provincial government, and local government. The problem is the way the structure is. It creates fragmentations, mm. and it creates, in a sense, competition. Yes. Whilst we're supposed to work more in a coherent and a unified process. So I think there's lots of issues, but we need a more stronger developmental state to deal with the real issues of our society. So you were MEC of Economic Development, right? MEC Public Works Transport, MEC Local Government and Housing and okay. so on. Okay, and that role that you played then, being in government, seeing what is going on, did it open your eyes? Yes, indeed so, indeed so. Look, I think it's, 
it's one where even then we had lots of debates whilst we were in government about how do we how do we change these things and yes a lot has happened and yeah. there's a lot of changes and whether it's ANC I think whether it's DA yeah. whether it's like in the future EFF or whatever else yeah. I think the importance is for us to adhere to our policy directives as a South African society and have less the the kind of what I would call beauty competitions amongst yes. uh, amongst government structures. Yes. This one fighting this one and the other one fighting the other one. And really work towards, so yes, it has opened eyes. There's lots of real problems in our communities. One of the starkest issues still, Stephen, is poverty mm. amongst the rural communities. And I think, um, you know, farm workers don't want a swimming pool. They don't want no. a, 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 a double story. They just want basic living conditions. Yes. And a, and a basic income grant. And, and, and I think those are the issues that we must work towards. So you were Deputy Minister of, uh, was it called DOCA? No, time? International. Yeah, International okay. Relations. So what does DOCA Corporation. actually mean in English? Because the, the Department of International Relations, Relations and Cooperation. Cooperation. Is that what yeah, it yeah, 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was called International Relations and Cooperation. Yeah. The first five years, it was still Foreign Affairs. Yes, the that's old, right. The old one, pre-94, it was still Foreign Affairs, Beitel and Sasaki. Yes, yes. Um, it has changed because of the developmental trajectory that, and, and the first five years it was Foreign Affairs post-94, yeah. and thereafter it was changed to international relations. And, and your role as a Deputy Minister, what is the role of a Deputy Minister of Doko? The, 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 you normally have in South Africa the Minister and the two Deputy yes. Ministers, and, and it's branched then out internationally, and Foreign Affairs, in this case the, our portfolio international relations okay. cooperation, is very big and it, it looks at geopolitical issues. So I was responsible for Africa, okay. Latin America and parts of Europe. Wow. And then the other deputy minister was like then for North America yes. and a few others, etc. But but essentially it was that interface between it's a state, it's a state portfolio. For example, if you're the deputy minister or if you work in Dirko, you cannot just speak as if you're speaking as an individual no, or you're no. speaking as a policy like at public works or in transport, you speak for that department. Yes. Turkey, you speak on behalf of the South African state. And therefore, you must be extraordinarily sensitive yeah. and careful what you say, how you yeah. say it. And then it is the link with the various multi-disciplinary multi, um, structures as well as the geopolitical institutions, for example, African Union, EU, etc. And the regional integration yeah. stuff. So. I've looked a lot in the reintegration and the integration process. Part of what I was um, glad to be part of is when BRICS was formed. Yes. Um, South Africa, when South Africa became part of BRICS, it, happens in, it happened in South Africa. And, and it was amazing because a lot of the analysts said, yes, but South Africa is too small in size, mm. um, in um, economic income brackets, to be part of a of that space, but look at what happened. Yeah. If we were not part of BRICS, we wouldn't have seen that multi-billion um, rand opportunity now with the COVID experience. Yes. So we've got strategic partners globally. Yes. And what Durko does is to create those relations and make sure that the South African state perspectives on anything in the world are being adhered to, um, or that we are pushing that perspective. and on behalf of the South African society. So we had the United Nations General Assembly. I was part of the experience when it was very really interesting because in at, um, when the Libyan situation occurred, um, we were at um, um, Addis in, in those meetings. Wow. And we've argued and so argued that actually that we need, we need respect for, for regional perspectives. Because if you've got, if you've got some institution in the world sitting somewhere and just bombarding positions into Africa, mm. it can become a problem. Yeah. So we need to continue um, pushing the regional integration approach. I was also um, part of the experience of Madagascar um, and, and being the special envoy on behalf of the president that wow. time, um, where you had two presidents, um, former president Ravala Manana, that was pushed out yes. by the military and um, then led by uh, President Rajolina, and there was big issues. Sadiq then deployed a team, and I headed up that particular group under President Chisano. And yes, I was part of where they literally had to sign a document to, to go for peaceful resolve, and that first election that neither President Ravalamana or President Rajolina was supposed to mm. stand, and they adhered to that, and after that, 
very recently there was another election and yeah. President Rajalina is now democratically elected. Sure. So one can say it was a very deep experience. And, 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 and final point there is the fact that South Africa has so much to offer at the level of the policy positions internationally. Okay, so going moving forward now to your role as the chairman or chairperson of Fight to Fame. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's still global. Yes. So think about my role in, yeah, yeah, in international yeah. relations. It's still global. Um, we've built a pan-African model. Um, we're looking at the world through Africa, Latin America and Asia. Um, so part of my Moja um, business development is a tri-continental experience to see how do we bring the world together mm. through our efforts. We mustn't only wait for the state. And I'm coming from government, so I'm saying that we mustn't only, the yeah. answer doesn't, it's, it's supposed to be a tripartite situation where the, it's the state, it's private sector, and it's the communities and civil society. So there's this amazing opportunity called Fight to Fame. It's built on a blockchain technology, and it interfaces with films on the one side, um, reality TV show, um, the gaming industry, um, as well as, for example, events, and even music, musical events and sport. And then it, we've, we've got 10 to 20 countries already. People like me in Africa or people like myself in Brazil, yeah. etc. in America set up and we've connected with some of the global players in filmmaking industry. If you think about it in this way that 65 to 70% of all the value chain of business in the film industry sits in China and sits in America. Mm. Where is Africa? We've got one billion people. We have possibly six, five to six cities in the five to six cities in the of the ten fastest growing cities in the world. You're going to find in Africa. Yeah. So we've got so much to offer, and 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 with a new intra trade agreement document signed by the presidents of Africa, we believe Fight to Fame is at the right space. We also believe the fact that we've got the COVID experience. It's 4IR, it's um, 5G, it's, it's integration of skills development in that space. So we, we are working on three to four good films. And one of those films, so that you know, is Chain of Voices. Um, it will hopefully be a 50 million US dollar project. Nice. Uh, international film about Andre P. Brink wrote, wrote yes. a book. Um, and we'll, we'll go and make it a movie now. And, and it plays itself out about the slavery, the revolt, of slaves against uh, um, you know oppression and colonialism, yes. so that's one. We've signed a partnership with um, Don the Dragon Wilson, oh, yeah. if you remember the kickboxer and yes. like international action movie star, etc. And we will be next year, September, August, we will do a dragon festival for Africa in Cape Town. Oh, wow. So so quite exciting stuff, yeah. and and we hope people will will get involved. And then there's the sign on the cryptocurrency. Now, ten years ago, when when blockchain, when Bitcoin was started, people heard about it. I was one of those that stayed away from yeah. it because you're not sure what this no, is. Yeah. It's digital, etc. But it was 0.07 cents in the dollar then. Today, that same 0.07 cents is is today worth around about 10,000 US dollars. So I should have. I, I should know, have. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 yeah, if you've missed out Bitcoin, uh, make sure that you don't miss out the FF token, fight to fame token. So we will have a token. We will create um, a wealth strategy into that, and it will be an interface between that and traditional business. It's the only, it's the only cryptocurrency that's built on a hybrid between normal traditional businesses like events, like um, films, etc., and a blockchain technology. And therefore, we'll be aggressively going out in the future in Africa and say to people, join this experience mm. um, because it's an experience of wealth creation. Can people find out information anywhere? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, fighttofame.com okay. um, and it's on our websites, etc. Okay, awesome. Marius Franswan, we can sit here all day chatting. Thank you, my friend. I know that you're a busy man. We've got to get back to fighting people. So fight to fame. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Mm. Thank you. Anything in closing from yourself? Yeah. No, I, just to say, that, Stephen, that I think I've observed some of your your diplomat shows and even the other stuff that you're busy with. And I think from our side, from, from, from society's side, um, the work that you, you are doing, the work, the fact that people are starting to talk about, they want to connect more with the diplomatic yes. community, yes. with activism in society. Yes. So, so let's say that well done and, and continue good work, but make sure that young people, um, talent search is happening and that we grow society for the better. Absolutely. Coming from you, that means a lot. Thank you, sir.
Thank you. Uh, Myers Franceman, of course, uh, interesting conversation with him. Thank you so for being on the show. And uh, check out Fight to Fame. Check out the, uh, what's it called? FFS token. FFT. FFT, FFT token. FFT token. There we go. Uh, check out the FFT token, fighttofame.com, and find out more details. Follow it. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Something awesome to check out. Uh, make sure that you are interacting at Stephen Taylor SA, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you, Corner, Puppy, um, Andrew, and the rest of the team. Two-minute dimension. We'll catch you back next week, same time, same place.